Mediterranean's occupation. Tao was ecologically stable. The conservation of the environment was an essential component of Tibetan's daily lives. Tibet was left in harmony with nature, guided by the Buddhist belief in the interdependence of both living and unliving moments in the earth. This belief was further strengthened by the Tibetan Buddha's traditional adherence to the principle of self contentment. That the environment should be used to fulfill one's need and not for greed. Tibet had the most successful system of environmental protection, a living and active region in the modern world. In the Horse War year of 1642, the fifth Dalai Lama began a tradition of annual decrees for the protection of animals and the environment. Nobody will hunt, let alone kill the birds of the air. The animals of the hills and forests, fish and otters of the water. Nobody, however noble or humble, should do violence to them or hurt them. The General Decree, 13th Dalai Lama, 1940. Protected from hunting and revered for its beauty and grace, the black necked cranes, Tibet's largest bird, once filled the skies, rivers, and marshlands with their hunting cries and joyful dance. There was a harmonious relationship between nature and human beings. And, uh, and the Tibetans have adapted to the environment, the fragile environment, you know, harsh environment of the Tibetan plateau in a very sustainable way. In 1706, while being forcibly taken away to China, the sixth Dalai Lama penned the following White Crane, lend me your wings. I should not fly far from the tomb I shall return. Prophetically, the tomb, a village in eastern Tibet, was to become the birthplace of his reincarnation, the seventh Dalai Lama. With the Chinese invasion of Tibet in the early 1950s, and following the escape from Tibet of His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama in 1951, came a change in human and crane's relationship. No longer protected from hunting by Buddhist beliefs and governmental proclamations, widespread destruction of the species began to take place throughout Tibet by Chinese arrivals. The black bear crane calls became rare and non-existent in regions once prolific with the birds. This is a story of one Tibetan school's examination of not only the recent history and hopes for one of the planet's living species treasures, Trotrinkeda, but of the history and hope for the future of one of the planet's cultural and religious treasures, the Tibetan nation. The very purpose of his always requesting the government of India to start schools for Tibetan children in India were basically aimed at restoring Tibetan culture and uh, heritage. In the Tibetan children's village we began as a nursery for refugee children because in the early 60s, late 50s, when we first arrived as refugees, the only work that Tibetans could honestly engage in were on road constructions. So while the parents worked and built the highest mountain roads that you see in India today. The children played in the dust and uh, some of them didn't have relatives, some of them were abandoned, other people looked after them. And this is what this felt very sad. If this is the future of the Tibetan children in exile, then we are- Every year about uh, more than 1,000 uh, refugees travel across the mountains, Tibetan refugees, um, out of which um, but more than half of it are children. Um, 90% or 98% are not accompanied by their parents. Uh, children as small as uh, three years old or even less and um, are given in the hands of these guides who bring them across. Now, when do they come? Winter. My name is Tupingi and I'm 13 years old. 
I'm going to 7th grade. I was born in Lhasa and my father and mother live in Amdur. If we haven't so much money by and to came in a airport, so uh, we came in a truck by hiding from the Chinese because they will catch us. When we was coming to India, she, uh, we and my sister was me, was with me, and uh, at the middle road she got ill and she died there. He can't remember, I remember much. He escaped from the bed. He woke during the uh, night and rest in the daytime. This way he escaped in the, in the bed. He has to walk crossing many rains, so that's why it was too cold on the way. So that's why he has to cut his foot. My name is Tinebama. And I'm um, 14 years old. I was born in Kam. Um, I escaped from Lhasa. I have no passport. It took um, one month, five days. And on the day, we um, sleep. And on the night, we um, walk. If we um, met a um, Chinese army, then um, we, um, sometimes they saw us and they um, chasing us.
Almost 20 people can fit in one tent. You yeah, don't take big ones. It's depend on the size of the tent, and they have they have to make this one with a pure yak wool, no, yak wool black one. That one is good for water also. It's proof waterproof. It's become like waterproof. Which led to the escape of the soul of the 14th Dalai Lama to Italy 
followed by 85,000 refugees who sought asylum in India, Bhutan, and Nepal. Since 1949, due to political persecution, executions, imprisonment, torture, and famine. Over 6,000 of Tibet's monasteries, their religious and cultural centers, have been destroyed. With the invasion of Tibet, the nature friendly attitude of the Tibetan people was trampled upon by a consumerist and materialistic Chinese communist ideology. The invasion was followed by widespread environmental destruction in Tibet. Since the invasion in 1949 by the uh, communist Chinese of Tibet, there have been unprecedented destruction of the environment, uh, deforestation, uh, mining, uh, degradation of grassland and pastures, and then the loss of rich uh, wildlife resources. But this has been happening because of you know, the Chinese ideology that the environment and the nature should be used for human purposes, a utilitarian concept. That uh, So their concept of using environment for human beings has you know, created a complete uh, imbalance in the Tibetan plateau environment. And then like, you know, in 1990, before, one of my cousins came from Tibet. He was born in Tibet, so like he went to Tansi school. And he told me, you know, I asked him about, you know, oh, you know, are there cranes, you know, nesting uh, in your backyard, you know, which was the same backyard that my grandma grew up. And my cousin was like, no, I haven't seen crane all my life. And it was from the same town. In the final weeks of study in preparation, the students searched for possible scenarios for how Tibet could regain its freedom, restore ecological balance, and become a zone of peace, as proposed by His Holiness the Dalai Lama. Community leaders shared their views. Students wrote hundreds of stories of hope for their future, and the upcoming pageant pandemic was finalized. <laughs>
in no violence. Therefore, uh, unless and until a group of people is uh, grown or to prepared who really believe into no violent action. And today, the majority of the Tibetan people uh, do not know what is no violence action. And uh, there are no violence because of His Holiness' uh, leadership. If His Holiness' leadership should not be there, then I, I can't think that the Tibetan people, particularly uh, the, um, the uh, very enthusiastic and patriotic lot of Tibetan people could remain no violent in the face of a tremendous provocation from the Chinese repression. So, uh, this is only one man's personality uh, which, uh, which preserves a no violent uh, movement until now. So, there is a very urgent need uh, to, to educate, um, to educate uh, the youngsters, uh, the no, no value of no violence action. In the beginning, I was not agreeable, for example, with the uh, Dr. Jan Sharp, who talked about the strategical no violence. I always uh, uh, recommend the Tibetans, as His Holiness mentioned in this uh, 10th March statement, the Tibetan policy is a hope for the best and a preparing for the worst. And even there's no change in immediate future, we are quite confident that the Tibetan cultural, Tibetan way of life, and Tibetan uh, spiritual heritage will not uh, uh, destroy it completely. Of course, it is uh, damaged a great deal, yet it has been very... Uh, very strongly and very uh, on very good footing, we are able to preserve, disseminate, and promote uh, this outside Tibet as well as uh, inside Tibet. There are hundreds of thousands of um, workers are uh, involved in the preservation of Tibetan uh, legacy and Tibetan heritage, and uh, um, as long as this cultural heritage remains there. We have the hope for the future. But today we have a cold-blooded communist regime ruling China who are actually seeking to wipe out the Tibetan people. And the strongest evidence, uh, <clears throat> the most important message that I'm here to say today is that Tibet faces the real and urgent danger of being wiped out as a people, as a distinctive culture. So again, I would just say that I spent a lot of time up in, you know, this area, in the, in the um, high meadows, in the, the, the sort of high uh, meadows um, with the other ones, taking them out to graze. At the end of the fifth Tibetan month, and in the sixth Tibetan month, there were so many different wildflowers. And then, if you walked uh, in bare feet or in, with your boots on, the flowers covered your feet, so they dyed your feet. And Genoji always says, you know, first it would be one color, and then, you know, a few weeks later, the old. The next lot would come out with a different color. You might be able to find out what these animals are if you could get the Tibetan one, you know. No. That's bad as well. Yeah. So I feel like enlightenment of consciousness is not like it's given to you. It's not like it's taught to you in school and you learn them. It's in yourself. You know, like in Tibetan, like, you know, I'm born. And then some goes to us about Buddhist. And there is some major class, you know, like if I see a dying bird, I would take care of it. But you know, like, um, I don't 
don't think Chinese, because of their communist background or builder, I don't think that they have that kind of capacity. So no matter how strong the laws and conservation measures are, if people are not intrinsically, you know, compassionate in their heart and care for animals, I don't think those laws are going to help. And so long as, like, Chinese are keep pouring into Tibet with all those migration and immigration, I don't think that any conservation measures will work. And for that, we need free Tibet, you know, heart and care for animals. I don't think those laws are going to help. And so long Disturbing emotions, uh, you know, the harm that they inflict um, is actually going to harm them as well because the negative actions they perform uh, will you know, produce future suffering for them. And when we think about that, then uh, it should uh, lead us to feel compassion for them out of those uh, very disturbing. If we can see him as closely connected to us, and if we can uh, arouse uh, feelings of compassion and love for them, uh, and then act out of those feelings of compassion and love, it may be possible to turn it around. You know, they may respond uh, in a different way if we can approach them uh, in a loving way. For that, we need free Tibet, you know, and for that, um, you know, he told us there's a path, you know, about his path, you know, the path of Ahimsa. Uh, and um, I strongly deep down my heart, you know, uh, Tibet is going to be independent, two non-lions, of course, uh, but then, like, it will take time, you know, India, it took 200 years, 